Hi, my name is Dave Swartz. I'm a volunteer with the Fort Collins Natural Areas Program. In this video, we're going to take a short tour of some of the geological features you can find around Fort Collins. Colorado is one of the most diverse states geographically and geologically, as it stretches from the vast eastern Great Plains to the southern Rocky Mountains and ultimately the Colorado Plateau in the far west. The geology as well as location on the continent result in Colorado having more water in the central mountain portion and near desert-like conditions where most people live along the Front Range and also in the far west. Fort Collins is right where the Great Plains rise to form the Rocky Mountains, giving us a front row seat to see the resulting geologic landscape. Fort Collins, the Poudre River Valley, and the Great Plains to the east sit above layers of sedimentary rocks thousands of feet thick, deposited over the past 540 million years. Sedimentary rocks form as flowing water and winds slow down, allowing denser solid particles to settle to the bottom and pile up. If you've ever tried your hand at sand art in a bottle, you'll know the bottom layers had to go down first. In sedimentary rocks, the lower layers are older, with the youngest layers at the top. Geologists show this stacking of the layers with drawings called stratigraphic columns. We'll use this one a lot to learn about the rocks near Fort Collins. Horsetooth, Milner Mountain, and others west of Fort Collins are huge blocks of buried rock that pushed up thousands of feet and caused the overlying sediments to be lifted and tilt to the east. Much of the overlying tilted sediment has since eroded away, but all along the line between the mountains and the plains, ridges of sedimentary rock remain. The top layer, the Pierre Shale, overlies most of the eastern Colorado plains. It formed when Colorado was covered by a great sea, before the uplift of the current Rocky Mountains. The Pierre Shale is easily eroded, which makes it difficult to find good exposures. The Pierre Shale formed about 80 million years ago. We know this age from worldwide correlation of fossils and a process called radiometric dating, used by geologists for more than a century. The rock underlying the Pierre is the Niobrara Formation, which can be seen on the west side of Fort Collins, just off Overland Trail and near the Quail Hollow neighborhood and Spring Canyon Park. At Skimmerhorn Street and Overland Trail, there is a nice exposure of the Smoky Hill Shale, which makes up most of the Niobrara layer. Shales are easily eroded and crumble, although this particular layer is harder than most. Our next stop is the very prominent but low ridge a little further west in the Pine Ridge Natural Area. This is the Fort Hayes limestone layer that forms the first easily seen hogback or ridge of rock. Limestone is much harder than shale, more resistant, so it forms a cap over the underlying rocks, allowing ridges to remain while shales above and below are more easily eroded. This rock layer is the primary ingredient in cement and used to be mined just north of Laporte. There are fossil shells resembling oysters in this layer. You don't have to look very far to notice the shape of the Inoceramus shell right at your feet. Remember, this is a natural area, so leave the fossils where they are so others can discover them as well. Right below the Niobrara, and also in the Pine Ridge natural area, is the valley formed by the shales of the Carlisle, Greenhorn, Groneros, and Maori formations. Mainly shales, these are easily eroded, forming the valley we see here. Further east in Well County, these layers are buried deep and contain huge reservoirs of natural gas and oil. You drive over these 90 to 100 million year old sediments as you approach the switchback on West County Road 38 and start up the slope of the Dakota Formation. This is the most prominent hogback west of Fort Collins. 
This ridge forms the eastern side of Horsetooth Reservoir, helps anchor the three massive dams that loom over Fort Collins, and is where the prominent A sits west of Fort Collins. The two main layers of the Dakota Formation, the South Platte and the Lytle below it, have great exposures all along the east side of the reservoir. The South Platte sandstone is made of fine quartz grains that are well cemented together to form a much more resistant rock than shale. The Dakota group formed approximately 100 million years ago. Driving toward the South Bay Marina, we pass the rocks of the Morrison Formation, famous for fossil dinosaurs. It is part of the Jurassic geologic time period and is 145 to 156 million years old. The Morrison is mainly shale, easily eroded, and so is difficult to recognize. Underlying the Morrison is the Sundance, Gelm, and Lichen shales. All these shales form the valley underneath Horsetooth Reservoir. There are about 45 million years that no sedimentary rocks were laid down between the Dakota and the Morrison formations. This time gap is called an unconformity and shows as a squiggly line between the layers on the stratigraphic column. Under Horsetooth Reservoir are the lichen shales and limestone deposits. The oldest shales started forming around the time of the Great Permian extinction 252 million years ago. Little fossil evidence other than stromatolite formations, now limestone, are found in these layers. The Permian extinction wiped out close to 95% of marine and 70% of terrestrial life in the greatest extinction event ever. Once you pass the Stout Store at the South Bay Campground, the road once again switches back and starts up a long slope. The exposed rock on your left and at the top is the Lion's Sandstone, a strong rock used in the building industry and also mined extensively near Bobcat Ridge open space. The Lion's Formation is the hogback on the western side of Horsetooth Reservoir and formed 280 million years ago in a sand dune environment. Below the Lion's are the red shales of the Owl Canyon Formation. This is a great view of the Dakota Formation on the far side, the hill slope of the Morrison, Sundance, and Jones Formations, and the South Bay of Horsetooth Reservoir on top of the Valley Forming Lichens Formation. We're going to skip ahead and drive past the Inlet Bay Marina and Horsetooth Mountain Park and go about five miles to Masonville, where we pick up the same sequence of rock layers. The Lion's Sandstone we see west of Masonville has been quarried for building materials for the past 150 years all along the Front Range. As you approach Bobcat Ridge, we drive up a tiny canyon that weaves through the Lion's and Owl Canyon formations. The last major hogback below the Owl Canyon is the Ingleside Formation, and it forms the top of the prominent ridge that looks down at the Bobcat Ridge open space parking lot. Below the Ingleside is the Fountain Formation. These rocks were deposited between 298 to 310 million years ago and are made up of the erosional debris from the ancestral Rocky Mountains that were pushed up as the supercontinent Pangaea formed. A good exposure are the cliffs above the Bobcat Ridge parking lot below the Ingleside Formation which caps it. The wide valley floor of Bobcat Ridge sits atop the Fountain Formation. The limited exposures here can't rival the red color of Red Rocks Park west of Denver or the Flatirons in Boulder. But look for clasts or large rock fragments that are characteristic of the fountain formation. The exposure on the west side of the valley is exceptional and you can easily see the clasts that make up the conglomerate at the bottom. Even the geologic column notes these large clasts in the diagram.
We are now standing at a huge gap in the Earth's geologic timeline, known as the Great Unconformity. The bottom of the fountain is 310 million years old. The black metamorphic rock directly beneath is 1,710 million years old. There is a gap of 1,400 million years, or more than a quarter of the Earth's total history, right at our feet. This gap is found throughout the world. As we walk north along the trail, look for the tombstone-looking metamorphic rocks to your left or west of the trail. The entire mountain to the west is similar to Horsetooth and Milner Mountains, and is a block of underlying rock that was forced up recently, probably only 5 million years ago at the end of the current Rocky Mountain building period. There are several places along the trail where an abundance of white quartz crystals can be seen. This is the result of volcanic magma injected between metamorphic layers deep in the earth, creating a pegmatite dike. The large quartz crystals tell us the rock cooled slowly. Farther along the trail is evidence of another volcanic event that injected a large mass of tonalite, a granite-like rock. It is fine-grained rock that exfoliates or sheds layers, and so the rock appears very rounded as compared to the jagged metamorphics. There are motion-sensitive cameras along the trail to capture images of wildlife when humans aren't around. Here are some examples from when Rocky Mountain High School students participated in collecting the images. Look for both the very old black metamorphic rocks and also the slightly rounded quartz from the bottom of the fountain formation seen just off the trail here. When we reach the power line trail, we leave the metamorphics and igneous rocks in the great unconformity and start back across the fountain formation. You can see a teepee rock circle used by early Native American inhabitants and travelers near the trail intersection. As we head south back to the parking lot, be very careful of rattlesnakes along the path. Halfway along the return is an excellent exposure of fountain where the path crosses a small creek. Look for the large clasp characteristic of the fountain formation. So thanks for watching, and I hope you have a chance to visit some of the locations and rock formations you've seen in this video. Get out and explore your world. It's right out your back door.